Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop. In this video, we'll be taking a look at Adobe Shape and how we can integrate it into Photoshop. So let's jump in and see how it's done. So here we are, I've got my iPhone already. I'm actually using an iPhone 4S and I've got some apps already. Now, Adobe Shape is part of a new swathe of apps produced by Adobe, including Mix, Clip, and Brush, you can see there, and our favorite, Cooler, has now changed to Color. Now, the one I'm interested in for today is Adobe Shape, so I'm just gonna tap on that and open it up. The first thing it's gonna ask me is to sign up for free or to sign in. Well, I already have a Creative Cloud account, so I can just sign in here. There we go, tap on that one, and in we go. And what I have to do is put in my details. Okay, there we go, I'm gonna sign in, and off it goes and logs me into my Creative Cloud account. Now what it would do the first time you open this is ask for access to the camera, um, but I've already given it access to the camera previously, so it's not gonna ask me this time. And there we're presented with a picture of my desk. Uh, I'm just wiggling around a bit, you can see that it's a live camera. So here we are, still at my desk, and you can see that I've done a little bit of a doodle. And I'm just gonna bring in my iPhone and then just take a very quick photograph. Just press the big yellow button here. There we go. And we're all ready to work on it. And what we're gonna do is try and find the dark outlines for this image. And you can see that we've got some yellow lines there. So I've got a couple of controls here. I've got a slider, which then looks a bit more in depth at the darker tones. You can see that it's pulled out a few more of those, marking them in yellow. And I've got this round black and white icon down the bottom. And if I click on that, you'll see that it kind of reverses it. It's now looking for the whites on the darks rather than the darks on the lights. But I actually want it that way around. And just about there is fine. And I tap the big yellow button once more. And this time it's going to take away the photograph and leave the picture. Okay, I've got it. Now this works a bit like the paint bucket tool in that I can just click, just press down and you'll see that it sort of fills in everything that it touches. So I can deselect these. Anything in white is now deselected. If I make a mistake, I can then move this slider across at the bottom and then I can paint back in. And we're about done. That was easy enough. Now I've got a little spot down here by this chap's, let's say chin. Uh, I can just zoom in. I've got to do an two finger pinch out here and you see that I can then just tap on that and it disappears. Now as I zoomed in there you may have thought that looked a bit jaggy but don't panic it's going to be resolved when we click the tick this time and what it's going to do as it said on the screen there is draw in the smooth curves so it's going to try and smooth this out a bit like in Illustrator if you've used that before. So here we go, it's doing it now. I'm showing you this in real time and actually I quite like watching this. Um, I can understand that it wouldn't be a great entertainment for you. Now I've used um, a very simple shape here to do this demonstration. If you've got something a little bit more complex, it can obviously take a bit longer. Here we go then, it's almost done and there you go. Okay, I've got it. I've just got to name the shape now and I'm going to call this one Doodle. D -L -E. There we go, Doodle and I'm gonna click done. And that's all there is to it. Now this has been added to my library and you can see that I've got another two already here. Now the Mars was taken actually off of a mug rather than the Mars bar itself. And then I've got this F that was a, a very big F, about a foot and a half tall uh, on a wall as part of a quote. So you can see that it's done a very good job of the F here, very, very nice and neat, smooth curves. Um, if we go back to the library, the Mars isn't quite so good. We've got some gaps on the S, but I still kind of like it. We'll go back to the library. Now there are some other settings. If I go click on my library, you can see that we can create different libraries for different things. So I might want to put logos in one, type in another, that kind of thing. Maybe even a whole library just for my doodles. I'm not a drawer, as you probably already found out. Uh, I'm gonna tap on the square at the top there, that cube, and you can see that we can now change items about my account, and there's a little bit about shape as well. You can see that I'm using version 1.0.1. .1. So if you're watching this one in the future, hello, hope you like your flying cars. This is very new out at the moment though. 
You can give feedback and you can reset all those helpful things that kept popping up just a minute ago. Now, it also connects to Behance, Facebook and Twitter, which is quite helpful. So hopefully you'll show me some of the things that you've taken as well. Right, that done. Let's uh, click away and go and jump into Photoshop. So here I am in Photoshop, and if you've updated Photoshop recently, this will be the first change that you see. We've got a new welcome screen here. If you don't want to see it, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that it says don't show welcome screen again, and just tick that. Now there's some helpful stuff on here, so I'm going to keep it for a while. It doesn't really nag at me too much. I'm just going to close that. Now also with the new update, there's a new panel, well, one of many actually, and this one's called Libraries. And if I go over to my libraries and scroll down, there'll be at least two, there we go, that we recognize my Mars and my F shape. I'm just gonna file and open, sorry, file and new, and let's, uh, well, let's use that one, that's fine. Now, all I have to do here is just click on one of these and drag it across. Now, I'm rather hoping that my doodle will come across very soon, but my Wi-Fi isn't playing ball terribly well at the moment. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go click on this and drag it across and in it comes. Now the first thing you'll notice is it's got a bounding box around it, which means it can be scaled up quite freely. And if I hold shift, of course I can strain it and I can scale this right up. And because it's a vector shape, that does mean that it's gonna hold its shape absolutely fully. If I click the tick, you can see now that it's quite sharp, it's really nice. Now I can do whatever I like with it once I'm here. And of course, we can keep adding to them through Adobe Shape as well. We can build them up, we can add to them. I can always add my Mars in here as well if I really wanted to. There we go, and click the tick. It's as simple as that. I'm Eric Renault. thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget to share with me your experiences of Adobe Shape. I'd really like to know how you're using it. Until next time, bye-bye for now.